backyard zoos in the United States of America. Now, speaking of all things medical, the Australian Medical Association has decided to get tough with parents who seek alternative medicine. The peak body wants parents who refuse traditional medical treatment reported to the authorities. For more, we're joined by the president of the Australian Medical Association, Dr Steve Hamilton. Doctor, good morning in Brisbane this morning. A little bit harsh, isn't it, to refer them to the authorities if they just seek some alternative medical advice? Well, yes, it certainly would be. So this uh, bar has to be set necessarily high, but sadly we do see parents that really, in, in, in the face of overwhelming evidence, still don't want to accept medical treatment. And I guess we have a, an example of a case of even um, a widespread dermatitis where, where the young child lost their life. But other examples include things like severe asthma, where in fact uh, it can be life-threatening and we do need to have that uh, ability to call in the authorities if things are going bad. OK, you, you might want to run us through a few other examples because I'm sure that some parents will be concerned when they hear about the idea of them uh, receiving some kind of punishment if they take them to alternative therapies. What other things are we talking about? Well, of course, the, um, if, if you, ha you certainly do have the right to refuse treatment. Parents should know that, and they have a right to discuss that treatment with their doctor. But when it gets to the point where it might be life-threatening, we do see tragic examples. And I, I have one of my own, and I guess every GP and every specialist would. Now, a young, a young girl who had asthma, and I felt that uh, she needed admission to hospital, and the parent wanted to take the child home, and it was making me very concerned about the, the child's safety. In fact, I didn't know the mother, and often it doesn't happen if you know the parents well enough that they trust you. But this particular child uh, was getting worse and worse. The oxygen levels were, were down. And I said to the parent, I really am concerned about the safety of your child, and uh, I think they should go to hospital. And the parent said, oh, no, no, they've been uh, this sick before. I'm going to take them home. And I said, well, you don't understand. I'm really, really uh, concerned. And in fact, if you do take the child home, I, I'm going to call the police and ask them to take your child to hospital. And the parent then turned to me and said, you're serious? And I said, yes, I am serious. And she then said, well, OK, I'll take her to hospital. Now, that child was in intensive care for three days, so mm. I felt like I'd made the right decision. But we don't want to have to get to that point, but I guess when we do, it's really important. Another example would be meningococcal meningitis, where you, there's, a, there's a terrible rash that can signal the onset of this septicemia. Now, if the parent or even the doctor didn't recognise that, that's a life-threatening situation. We do need to actually say, well, we need to take this decision out of your hands because it's for the benefit and safety of the child. OK, we'd love to get your thoughts on that. Parents who are watching this morning today at 9.com.au or you can reach us via the normal means on social media. Dr Steve Hamilton, President of the AMA, thank you very much for your time this morning from Brisbane. Thank you very much. Over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Ben. Well, coming up...